Now next, I think what I'll do is unlock by right-clicking the lock icon, the pipe that we initially had there. And I'll select everything and drag it off to the side. Tap Alt to make a copy and then release. And I'll just rotate this a little bit because I want to do a rendering of it now. And I want to have multiple views of the design in one image. And I'll go back to my four views and I'll drag the divider to get an aspect ratio that I like for the view. Something like this. And I'll save this view. So if this is uh, the angle and also the size that I like for the rendering, I'll save this view going into my named views and click the little plus here. And I can just name this uh, render. And now if I rotate this view or something and I want to get back to that view, I can just double click render and there I am. Now whenever you're rendering uh, in any program, I would recommend clicking render before you do anything and making small changes to see what does what as you learn your process. Now I'll tell you before we click render uh, where everything's going to be. It's two spots, render properties and materials in the render drop-down menu. So what do we get if we click the render icon here? We get that. So you can see there's some shadows and everything is matte gray and we have some sort of uh, choppy line work here. That's called aliasing. All right, so there's a couple settings we want to change and we want to add some lights as well. So the first thing I'll do is I want to have some sort of paper backdrop, if you will, and I'll draw a curve like this. And I'm using that shift key there, turn on ortho. And I can rotate this view. Remember, it's saved, so it doesn't really matter. And I can see that uh, I actually want this to be rotated around, something like this. And I want to make this um, a surface, so I'll drag it over, hold down Command, and Release to make an extrusion object. And if I go back into my saved view, I can then select that and in the top view I'll just rotate this a little bit, something like that. There we go, perfect. And I don't need that curve anymore, so I'll throw that away. Now if I click render, you can see that we'll get shadows falling on this backdrop or ground surface that we made. I'm kind of thinking of this as a photo studio and setting up a, a shot using an actual camera. So next we'll go into our materials and click on materials in the render drop-down menu and you'll get your material editor and let me just make this a little bit smaller here for the sake of the video and I'm going to select everything except the ground plane here and a little trick if you don't want to move the ground plane while dragging a fence selection hold down the Alt Option key and you can then not move the thing under your cursor. So I select all that stuff and then I'll drag from the standard materials gold here and you'll see that they highlight all those selected objects highlight and I'll release that and that adds the gold material to the model materials. So now any change to this will update all of these. I'll close my material editor, hold down Option and click to deselect and do another render. So you can see now we have the gold on there. Okay, next I'm going to add a rectangular light. If I click and hold on the light icon here, I can see that I have rectangular light as an option. And I want to make a light that starts here but is actually higher in the Z axis. So I'll hold down the command key and click and then go into the front view, click again then go back to the top view, hold down shift, click again, move up, and click again. And this makes our rectangular light 
higher up than it would have been if I had just made it in the top view. So holding down Command before that first click indicates that that's the location in X, Y, but you actually have another piece of information for Z coming to it. Now I'll click Render, and this time the standard modeling lights are not being used. Instead of the standard modeling lights, we are now using the rectangular light. And one of the really nice things about rectangular lights is that they give you soft shadows. Now the only thing missing here is that we don't really have any reflections popping on the metal. So for that, what we're going to use in Render Properties is we're going to use what's called a high dynamic range image. And this high dynamic range image is going to go into the background channel in the basic section. So Rhino Render, Basic, Background, Environment. And we'll click Choose. And I'm going to use an HDR from uh, some files that I've shared on the Food for Rhino site. So here we'll use, um, let's see, uh, something small would be fine. The Blur Loft one, I know that's on the Food for Rhino site. And that's it. And then I'll close the render properties for now, and we'll do another render. And you can see immediately the difference that that HDR file has on the render. So now we have these bright spots on the metal. So that's all coming from the HDR file, the high dynamic range file in the environment. But the lighting itself is powered by this big rectangular light. And the size and distance of the rectangular light to the model has a bearing on what the shadow looks like as well. So you can play with, with scaling that rectangular light like that. And I'll do, make sure this is the active view. I'll do another render so you can see the result there. So the shadow gets a little bit darker. Actually, it was probably better before, wasn't it? So, make that a little bit larger. Now, the last setting that we would change in Render Properties is this anti-aliasing. So, you remember that, that sawtooth or chatter that we saw in the silhouettes? That has to do with this anti-aliasing setting. So, the higher this anti-aliasing setting, the smoother those silhouette lines will look, but the longer the rendering will take. And so you can see the rendering would have been done by now. Now it's three quarters done. Now it's done. Now there's one other setting that I might change on this. And um, I'll pause the video while this calculates, but I'll set it up first and show you what I'll be doing. So if you go into Render Properties Advanced, you can use what's called Focal Blur. Sometimes this is referred to as Depth of Field. And the nice setting here in Rhino Render on Rhino for Mac is that you have this autofocus on selected objects. So I'll just select that radial button and then close the render properties. Now this means I have to have something selected. So I'm going to select the dangle and the earring in the front, and then I'll render. And I'll pause this and come back so that you can see what the result looks like. And here's the result after we've rendered with Focal Blur on. And you can see that it, it does two things for us. It makes it more photorealistic, but it also makes the objects look smaller. And that's one of the dangers of using Focal Blur, but in this case, it actually benefits us because it makes the objects appear smaller. So that's a quick modeling tutorial for an earring design, as well as a simple basic rendering setup using Rhinoceros for Mac. Thanks a lot for watching.